Today we're going to announce the immediate availability of our MTB point motor driver. I find these little MTB motors an excellent uh, replacement for uh, tortoises. Um, they're small, they're just a little bit bigger than a servo really. And they've got the polarity switching and all the other bits in. Excellent product. Um, this board's been tested on the MP1, I think the MP5. Um, but basically this is, it might look similar to a solenoid driver, but the circuitry has been reworked and it can drive up to six of these point motors through our network, which means you can attach it to a mimic panel or a DCC module or whatever. Uh, the way it works, the output, the center is positive and you switch either of the returns back to ground. So, um, this guy needs about four seconds to move. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate it. I'll hook up a multi-panel to our network interface. There we go. Now when I operate switch number one, you'll see the point motor move. So you get the slow action and it moves one way and then it moves back the other. Now what's actually happening is we are switching one side of these connectors uh, in the default state for five seconds and then we turn the power off switch it back. You don't need to turn the power off, but we thought it was a neat feature to add. Um, I can demonstrate that on uh, output number four because I've connected a pair of LEDs. So if I switch number four, you can see this LEDs come on. And after five seconds, we chop the power. And then if you switch it back the opposite way, this one comes on and after five seconds, it switches back. Now five seconds is the default when we set our power using the power setting to three. Uh, there are five different power settings available on this board. So you might think of other uses for this board as well as just driving MTB motors. On power setting one, you'll get a half second pulse, which isn't enough to allow this to move all the way, but you might have a, a, a use for it. So if I take the power and move it down to power level one, there we go. When I operate number four, you'll see it comes on for half a second and then it goes off and it's back on for half a second. Uh, Power setting two will give me a full second. One second on one way, one second the other. And up to number three. Three gives me the five second default, which is enough time for this motor to move all the way. And then we're off and back again, just like here. Now, if you change your mind while one light's on, don't worry, it'll automatically reverse. So if I go on to power setting um, number four, which is 10 seconds. Now I'll move it, it'll stay on for 10 seconds. If I want to change it back though, even while that timer's running, no worries, just switch it straight back. And after 10 seconds, the power goes off. And if you set it to five, then it stays on permanently. So if I move it back, now it's just permanently powered. So there might be a little circuit or motor that you want to drive in, in one direction or another, or switch something on or off this might be the way to do it. So in this case, that will always be on, or the opposite lead will always be on. But if you're connecting an MTB motor, then all you need to do is leave it on the default three and um, just use it. Go back to three, one, two, three flashes on the power light, and now everything will work as normal. Power to this is through a 12 volts DC. It needs one amp or more to drive the six. These motors are rated at, I think, 150 milliamps each. So um, I've assumed enough power for all six to move simultaneously and a little bit extra for the, for the processor board itself. But that's the MTB motor driver. You can find it on the website. You can download the documentation. We have a, a user guide for it that explains how to hook it up, what all the things do. Um, little picture showing the motor hooked up and an explanation of the output power settings. Thanks for watching.